All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and uh, welcome back to the channel. I have something very, very, very interesting here with me today. Look at this shiny thing. This is uh, this coming with this uh, padded uh, nylon zippered pouch, but whatever. We are here for uh, for this fella. This is a Rod Olson uh, uh, Galaxy in a full dress. That's the certificate of authenticity for this thing, guys. This is uh, yeah. Look at this uh, mesmerizing, uh, labyrinthic. Uh, <laughs> set of uh, look at this guys would you look at that shiny right yeah let's check the size first uh we got uh not a, this is not a big knife uh, we have like nine centimeters for the blade with pretty much seven and a half for the cutting edge 11 for the handle 19 for the overall uh, uh, thing like just to give uh, uh, you a perspective. This is a haptic from Holt Bladeworks and that's a Spectre one of uh, you know two of my favorite blades and another couple uh, of Knives you might be familiar with uh, you can see right over here a small Sebenza 21 and large Sebenza 21 But since we are showing like fanciness I can show you also like this duckling uh, from Cody Utzler and uh, a Brian Nado Tempest just uh, complete like a picture for fanciness handles and blades for sure we got a nice trio right there this is a rod olson galaxy uh, rod olson is a canadian knife maker um he's from uh, uh, alberta i believe and um is pretty good is uh, considered the master of button lock and in this case he killed it with this custom button lock custom pivot hidden hardware for the body would you look at that you don't see any screw going on you got uh, um, a lot of things going on in this fella right over here it's gorgeous uh, so I mean the the overall uh, construction looks simple but actually you get uh, I mean, for example, these scales, uh, this is like full Zircutai set of scales, mirror polished. Uh, this is a Dama steel inlays, uh, hidden screws on both sides. Look at that. The backspacer is a floating Zircutai backspacer. It has a lanyard hole right over here integrated with it. The clip on the other side again. Zirkutai, look at the polished thing, how it's shining. Yeah, guys, this is gorgeous. Hidden uh, uh, screw for the clip, you can maybe see it like from this angle right there. But the screws uh, for the handle, uh, for the inlays, are right there. So I believe there's like a tool that goes in just to unscrew this set of screws to expose the other two screws which are underneath these and goes through the backspacer to catch the lock side. That's my assumption. Otherwise, uh, I cannot explain any of this wizardry going on over here, which keeps the overall design of this show side and lock side extremely, extremely clean. This thing can be thumb flick. Uh, you can do like a reverse flick. You can do like a deployment just by holding the uh, button lock. So like that, just like gravity kind of thing, just right. And just closes like that. Or you can just do a slow roll with your thumb. Uh, there's nothing to catch on there. So because it's not a frame lock, it's a button lock. So that's a pretty cool... Uh, uh, build for sure it's fancy it's flashy but i love it it's uh really really gorgeous uh there is no internal skeletonization that is going to reflect of course on the scale because this guy is a small one yeah but uh, let's check it out guys we get 6.3 ounces in your pocket that is a honky chunk of metal uh, but it's a beautiful one it's uh, uh it's going in style and wait yes but style for sure uh the blade is a pretty cool dama steel blade uh it is mirror polished it has been deeply etched to reveal all these layers uh, underneath the surface. Look at this contrasty 
etching. That is going on. It's crazy. It's uh, it's gorgeous. I really like this one. Um, the 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 chamfering alongside this side right over here on the show side it just contributes to a very well grip. Really, really cool. Even if the handle is not that big, I would have preferred a little bit bigger just for my hands. But these two grooves are just setting into my hand really nicely. This little divot right over here, boom, it's just perfect for the thumb. So it just feels really great in the hand. Large hole on the blade just matches and follows nicely the contouring on the scale. So it's well integrated in the overall design. The blade is centered, it's recessed, it cannot snag the tip. Uh, there is no internal chamfering right over here, but it's not like sharp, but it's not as smooth as these uh, uh, outside. I really like the floating backspace so you can see the washers right over here and right over here, just uh, separating a little bit the spacer and creating that eff floating effect, which I really appreciate. The pocket clip has another little detail, as you can see that uh, semi-sphere underneath is pretty cool. The tension is a little bit on, uh, too stiff for my liking, but still is going to work uh, uh, pretty well in retaining the knife glued to your pocket. Uh, you have a nice Nice lanyard option going on right there. Even if I'm not a lanyard guy, I appreciate that. Uh, the, you can see right over here the mechanism, the button lock, uh, the stopping right there where it goes and just clicks in place like that. Um, Custom hardware is going to prevent you from taking this fella apart, so there's not going to be any maintenance video for this, but I'm assuming it's not too hard. Uh, in this case, it's going to be because also you need some custom tool to access the internal uh, screws right over there. Check out the backspacer from the inside. Just shines with all of those wavy layers. Very, very cool. Uh, the action is also... Uh, I would say on this one is the best action that I've ever experienced on any Rod Olson knives um, because uh, of this. So, first of all, there's no button stick whatsoever. And then, uh, it's not drop shot, but kind of is. Like, you see, just needed a little nudge. I'm not doing anything, nothing. I just give it a little nudge and look at that. It just, boom, it just wants to go. Um, and if you time it nicely, not like that, but like this, you can just time the button to just retain the blade and not have it just bounce out. So that means the detent is well dialed in. And I like the fact that you can fidget a lot with this fella. You have several ways to deploy uh, the blade. It feels incredibly sturdy. Even if it's not that texture, there's not much grip into the surface on the um, of these handles. It, it feels still locked in into your hand because of these grooves and this little divot is just locked in. You can kind of take advantage of this um, finger choil because the way that the plunge grind is recessed and it leaves exposed this sharp area you're gonna be fine for a little chisel work or something more precise it's gonna be all right uh you have a beautiful swedge there's no jimping over going on over here you have a nice crowning over here a beautiful swedge this is a hollow grind and pretty much 100 percent belly for this also, damn steel blade. This side is sterile looking, a lot of things going on, of course, but guys, the action on this fella, the fidgetability on this one is just like gorgeous. Like you can do this all day long. You can do this all day long, or you can do just a slow roll and just enjoy the fanciness of this piece in quiet peace. So there you have it. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.